We discussed in this lecture, lecture about how to find the m-dimensional subspace with maximal variance. And we continue in this lecture the discussion we started uh, last time, where we have established how to find the first principal component, meaning how to find the one vector uh, that will give you a direction such that when you project your data on that direction, you are going to preserve the maximal variance um, from your original data set. And so we are going to have now a discussion about the inductive step-by-step -step method on how to expand beyond that first uh, step. And then we are going to find a second vector and then a third vector and, and so on, all the way to the M vectors that we want to find out. And in this lecture, I'm going to assume that we already know how many principal components we want to have. Uh, we are going to come back to a discussion about the practicalities of how to choose this M in, in applications. But let's say for now that M is already know, known. We know how many principal components we want to choose. And so the setup of this uh, discussion is as usual. We have um, uh, these uh, data points X1 all the way to Xn, and these are all vectors of um, D dimensions or D features and I'm collecting them into this data matrix. Um, and I'm going to write it, I should have mentioned this maybe uh, earlier on, I'm going to collect them, uh, these data points, on the columns of this matrix, which is, means that X is going to be a matrix D times N. And this is contrary to what we've done um, in the linear regression chapter, where the data points were written as the rows of our matrix. But um, it's just that it doesn't make much of a difference. It's just that, uh, if I continue that discussion in that way, I should work with transposed instead of direct matrices, and that's going to make the um, uh, you know mathematical formulations a little bit more um, uh, cumbersome, but but not a big difference. So I hope that we are not confused about this. And uh, we have also defined the covariance matrix of our data points to be exactly this x times x transpose, which is a matrix um, d times d. And uh, um, so inductively, we are going to just assume that we found the m minus 1 principal components for some uh, small m. And that means we have found these vectors, b1, bm minus 1, r to power d. And um, uh, we have found them, uh, that's the in, in induction step, um, we, have, we have found them as the m minus 1 eigenvectors of s associated with its m minus 1 largest eigenvalues. And so now, the way we reason about this is that we are going to remove from the original data set the contributions of these principal components. And what I mean by contribution is that, remember, we deal with, um, uh, you know, data points uh, X, which are um, in uh, R to power D. And each one of these um, uh, principal components is going to um, compress our data space into uh, something like uh, r to power um, uh, m, m and, and that's going to give us some, uh, in, in, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, compressing, uh, some compression of, of x. And then uh, we can reconstruct our data point by multiplying with a vector bi, and um, that's going to give us uh, uh, the reconstructed x, x bar. And so, the point is, let's remove the contribution, you know, of these principal components that we already found. And on the remaining data set, we are going to reason again, again in the same way we will say, I want to preserve the maximal variance uh, on the remaining, remaining data point. So what, essentially what I want to say is, I'm going to just take these data points that we had minus the contributions of these uh, principal components. So each one of them contributes something, and, and I'm going to show you what, what they contribute. Um, so I want to, uh, you know, take these uh, reconstructed uh, data points along each one of these bi's. So to obtain this x bar, essentially we multiply by bi transposed. So it's going to be vi transposed times x to get into this um, compressed data space. And then after that, I multiply with bi to get the reconstructed part. So it's going to be like, like this. And this part, this one, I'm going to just denote this by bm minus 1. Um, so bm minus 1 
is exactly this. It's sum from one to m minus one, uh, bi, bi transpose. And that's the uh, projection matrix. <clears throat> Um, onto um, the space uh, spanned by uh, the vectors b1, bm minus 1. So what we have here is this is equal to x minus bm minus 1 times x. So that's the, that's the remaining uh, of our um, data set um, after we have removed the uh, contributions of these principal components. And we would like now to find, um, again, the one direction, the next principal component, the next uh, direction, the next vector, on which we maximize the variance um, of, um, of this uh, remaining, uh, you know, data set. So what we do is we are maximizing the variance, Vm, which is the variance of uh, this uh, set M, uh, which is going to be the average, one over N, um, sum of uh, the projections of each one of these uh, points. So it's going to be um, um, set MN squared, and that's equal to one over N, uh, sum of Bm transposed times Xn hat um, squared. And so that's the, <clears throat> similarly like we, we have discussed in the last lecture, that's the Bm transposed, and then we will have to find this Bm, uh, times the covariance of this data set x hat, so it's s hat, times bm. And so the conclusion is <clears throat> uh, to make, and obviously like, like we have discussed last time, uh, it, it, it doesn't really matter what the norm of this bm is, except that the bigger you have, the bigger the variance is. So in some sense, the bigger you have, the more inflation you are putting onto this uh, measure. So just to normalize, we are, we are going to take the, um, uh, the vector that has norm exactly equal to one, just like we have done for the other vectors. And so the idea is that uh, we are going to maximize um, this part. And uh, so maximize. Um, bm transposed s hat bm subject to this constraint. And I take this problem to, to the next whiteboard and um, uh, I just write it one more time. So the objective is going to be, hey, find that bm, which is maximizing um, this um, uh, bm transpose times covariance uh, s hat times bm subject to the norm uh, being equal to one. And just like we have discussed before, this leads right away to the direction that this is going to be <clears throat> the eigenvector Uh, of S hat associated with um, its largest eigenvalue, just like we have discussed in the last video. Here is one remark that I'm going to just give without giving a proof, but the proof is in, um, in the textbook uh, in chapter um, 10.2.2, but I, I will just skip it here because it's a bunch of calculations that, that perhaps um, hijacks the uh, focus of, of what I want to discuss uh, in, in, in this lecture. And the remark is um, the sets of eigenvectors 
of S hat and S are identical. This is a small result that, that is proved uh, uh, via a number of calculations. And um, what, what this leads to is that the moment we, we talk about you know, the eigenvectors of S hat, in fact, we can discuss about the eigenvectors of uh, S. And so what this means is that um, we are going to um, have to find out um, the variance uh, Vm to be Bm transposed times S, because it's the same eigenvectors for S hat and S for Sm, times Bm. And uh, because this is an um, uh, eigenvector, that's going to be exactly equal to lambda m, um, bm transposed bm. Uh, and, and check the calculations we have done in the previous lecture. And this is equal to lambda m. Uh, so um, that, that has to do just uh, simply with the fact that uh, uh, this is an eigenvector. So we just replace this with lambda bm. And then this has to do with the fact that this is um, of norm 1. So that, that's going to give us multiplication with 1. So that's lambda m. And uh, so what this gives in the end is that, um, again, we want to maximize vm. So we want to ma maximize lambda m. So that means that we have to take the next eigenvalue of s um, in order of their value. So I'm, I'm going to take essentially uh, the mth largest eigenvalue of s. And so what this means really, so overall procedure, Um, it means this that um, to find out, so to find out an n dimensional subspace of R to power D that retains maximal variance. of the data set, what we have to do is simply choose the m eigenvectors of S corresponding to its m largest eigenvalues. So it is as simple as that. And um, um, now the, the maximum, so the variance of the maximum variance preserved um, by this um, um, compression is going to be simply given by the sum. Remember the variance along each eigenvector is the eigenvalue. So that's going to be the sum Vm uh, equals from one to m lambda m, so the, the eigenvalues, which means if you turn this upside down, it means the loss, the uh, loss of variance, is uh, simply um, the rest of the um, eigenvalues from m plus 1 to d um, lambda j. And that's really uh, vd minus vm. And very often, this loss of variance is also normalized with respect to vd. So you can also report it as 1 minus vm over vd if you want to have this uh, normalized version of the loss of variance. So there you have it. Um, the overall procedure, what, what PCA comes down to, 
um, is this. You are given an, a data set and you want to find um, a, uh, a set of uh, M uh, uh, dimensions and compress your data set that originally came with D dimensions. You want to compress it into M dimensions in such a way that you preserve in some sense as much information as you possibly can. Mathematically, we have formulated this in terms of preserving as much variance as you possibly can from your data set. And we reasoned our way through this idea that you have to really choose the M eigenvectors of S that correspond to the M lar largest eigenvalues. And you do that, and um, the maximum values that you preserve is really the sum of these um, uh, eigenvalues. And um, the loss of variance, there, you, there will always be some loss of information, some loss of variance, is going to be simply uh, 1 minus Vm over Vd, uh, if you want the normalized uh, version of, of this thing. 